pregnancy in or child delivery in Nigeria. When you're pregnant, you have to um, pray. When you now have to go to the hospital, you need to even fast and pray the more because nurses, the way they treat them in the hospitals is one kettle of fish entirely. Some would say that some nurses would insult them, remind them and tell them that, was I there when your, me and your husband were you enjoying yourself? Now you want to come and put all the whole uh, drama on me. And then some will insult them, some will beat them, some will slap them. Why do they have to go through all that? Why do they do that? Well... I cannot dispute the fact that maybe it has happened, but I for one have not witnessed it. But for the women to, not one, not two women saying the same thing, mm. it must have happened. Mm. Let's begin this conversation taking a quote from Poppy Montgomery, who is an Australian American actress. She once said, There is nothing that anyone can say to prepare you for childbirth. Each woman's experience is so different, you never know how it will be for you. Absolutely spot on. My next quote is from Mariah Mongan, who is an educator, helped um, uh, popularize childbirth preparation technique known as hypnobirthing. She once said, My dream is that every woman everywhere will know the joy of a truly safe, comfortable, and satisfying birthing for herself and her baby. I like that one. And my last quote is from Shirley Friedman, who is a writer and teacher, once said, There is power that comes to women when they give birth. They don't ask for it. It simply invades them, accumulates like clouds on the horizon, and passes through carrying the child with it. Absolutely spot on. Now let's see how this quote relates to what we'll be discussing today. Very warm greetings and welcome to The Conversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Annabel Oji. In Nigeria, different tribes or cultures have ways of disposing of placenta. Some bury it, some burn it, and some still believe that it has a spiritual attachment to the baby and dispose of it must be done carefully. Others who do not want to be bothered about looking for the best site for burying or burning the placenta simply allows the hospital where they deliver their babies to dispose of it. The placenta is an organ that develops in the uterus during pregnancy. This structure provides oxygen and nutrients to your growing baby and removes waste product from your baby's blood. The placenta attaches to the wall of the uterus and the baby's umbilical cord arises from it. Placenta expulsion, also called after birth, occurs when the placenta comes out of the birth canal after um, childbirth. The baby, or the body rather, gets um, reads itself of the placenta vaginally in the vaginal birth or by a surgeon if it is done through caesarean section or like you, they call C-session, that's CS. Now let's talk about the traditional beliefs surrounding um, placenta disposal. The Igbo people of Southeast Nigeria bury it after delivery and sometimes plant a tree where it was buried. Some um, call it either the um, Ukune, that's the banana tree or the Oha tree. But then the houses in the northern part of Nigeria bury theirs as well and the Yorubas of the Southwest Nigeria also bury the placenta. However, they are very careful, or they are rather very careful, to place it in containers or clay pots where it will be easily discovered and dug up by carnivorous animals. The Yorubas, like most other tribes in Nigeria, have a spiritual attachment to it and believe that if anything goes wrong in its disposal, it may taint the person, that's the baby, when it grows up for life. In fact, they would ask a troublesome person, She ajagbe ibi omo e jenny, meaning, did a dog eat up your placenta? That's what they say. Okay. So now there's a particular religious group where the members anoint, pray, and burn the placenta, where the ash is then dispersed in the air. It is their belief that by doing so, nobody can dig up 
to use for any ritual purposes. But following the advocacy by some international celebrities encouraging women to eat their placenta for certain health benefits, it wouldn't hurt to give it a second thought before deciding to join that bandwagon. One of such um, celebrity is Kim Kardashian, uh, who revealed in December 2015, after she had, ha she had her second baby, that Saint West, that she ate her placenta to ward off postpartum depression. I'm sure you are looking at me like, what? Now, according to her, she ate it freezed dried and made it into pills and felt a surge of energy after swallowing it. Now, eating of placenta, which is also known as placental uh, phagi, is the practice of eating the placenta after delivery. According to med Medical News Today, it is believed that most non-human mammals with a placenta consume after their, that's after birth, the placenta, to eradicate the scent of their newborns and protect them from predators. Other literature suggests that animals eat their placenta as a way of regaining nutrients that might have been lost during delivery and to encourage mother-child burning. Other health benefits of eating placenta as cleaned include improved mood and milk production, increased energy and pain relief. Some of the methods of ingestion include taking it dried and sealed as capsules, adding it to smoothies, stir fried or adding it to vegetables. That's what some people do. I am not advocating. I'm neither here nor there. So, although the um, concept is still new to many Nigerians, they will not partake in or encourage others to do so. Now, let us take the religious beliefs about placentas. The placenta is buried in Islam because it is believed that we created um, you from the earth and we return to it. That's according to the um, Holy Quran. Many Islamic scholars believe that it is preferable to bury what comes out of a human um, being's body, such as hair, nails, and the likes. And the placenta may take precedence over the hair and the nails in terms of burying. Dr. James O. James, a Christian preacher, asserted in 2019 article that the placenta has a spiritual impression of being a replica of the baby and that while the placenta and the infant are physically separated, they are spiritually connected. As a result, whether the placenta on the goals has an impact of the infant, uh, infant rather, many Christians believe that the placenta can be used by persons with evil intentions, including manipulating and destroying destinies. Some Christians believe that the placenta should be buried while others believe that it must be burned. So, how best would you as a new parent or an experienced parent handle this situation? Send us a message via any of a social media portal now showing on your screen. Now, thank you, Nan, for that article. My guest on the show today is Linda Dong, registered nurse, and Obadiah Mbila, who is a media consultant and the convener of Ebo Neighborhood um, Outreach. Uh, neighborhood Thanksgiving Outreach, I beg your pardon. So, they will be my guests on the show today, and I will be your host. Welcome to this conversation. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation. We are reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now we'll go straight to our chat for this morning. And my guest, I've got two guests on the show today. And my first guest is the um, Obadiah Mbila, who is the convener, Ibo Neighborhood Thanksgiving Group. Great to have you on the show. On Thank this you show. very much for having me on the conversation. Great. <laughs> You're welcome to the show. All right. So my next guest is a female. She is um, a registered nurse. Linda Dung, it's great to have you on the show today again, ma'am. Thank you, Annabelle. I feel great to be here once again. Yeah, and I must say you look beautiful today. You look beautiful too. Thank and thank you, you for, despite the fact that you had to go through the late hour work, you were at work on yesterday night and you still yeah. found, find time to come straight from the office. Yes, so grateful. that's the joy of being a nurse. <laughs> being a nurse. So, Did yes. you hear that? A, a <laughs> Did you hear that part? A patriot. <laughs> yeah. I love being a nurse yeah. all the time. Great. Yeah. All right. Now let's start on, on that note because you talked about the joy of being a nurse and then being a nurse. Let's talk about um, the um, treatments that women, especially pregnant women, go through when they have to go to the um, hospital. I've heard some people come out to say that um, pregnancy in, or child delivery in Nigeria 
when you're pregnant, you have to um, pray. When you now have to go to the hospital, you need to even fast and pray the more because nurses, the way they treat them in the hospitals is one kettle of fish entirely. Some would say that some nurses would insult them, remind them and tell them that, was I there when you me and your husband were you enjoying yourself? Now you want to come and put all the whole uh, drama on me. And then some will insult them, some will beat them, some will slap them. Why do they have to go through all that? Why do they do that? Well, I cannot dispute the fact that maybe it has happened, but I, for one, have not witnessed it. But for the women to, not one, not two women saying the same thing, mm. it must have happened. Mm. Now, in the nursing profession, we are individuals. You know, okay. everybody has his own attitude. There are nurses you meet on some days and the patients will tell you, wow, you are one nurse that I want to meet every time I come to the mm, hospital. Yeah. And uh, there, when you hear stories of um, some of the women discussing what they went through in the labor room with some nurses, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And uh, the women might not, will not come out to lie that it happened if it did not happen. Now, the pressure of, I won't attribute it to the pressure of the work because as a nurse, you are supposed to be patient, tolerant, emphatic, putting yourself in the shoe of what your patient is going through so that you'll be able to care for this patient compassionately. Mm. Nursing is, uh, to me, I feel nursing is a calling. When you oh. say uh, 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 a pastor or being a pastor is a calling, a nursing teacher. is a calling. When, when you have the passion to care for others, when you're in that profession, you won't have the, 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 the you won't be in a position where you will maltreat a patient but when you have the compassion that it gives you joy taking care of your patients what gives you joy is when they come out doing well mm. and there are days when if your patient is not doing well you get home and you have sleepless nights worrying oh, really? about happens, the patient. It happens to Nigerian um, nurses. Yes patients about... think that uh, nurses are so hard yeah. uh, hard hardened that you don't feel any emotion you don't cry we cry when patients die oh wow you, yes you go behind you don't cry in the presence of your patients mm. but you go behind closed doors it's it's the emotions you have to be strong if you join the patient in crying who will Everyone. take care of the patient mm. so if 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 women have gone through uh, such treatments in the labor ward. It's so disheartening. Mm. And I will also say that apart from nurses, we, it's not everybody that wears white that is a nurse. We have auxiliary nurses and those who were not, were, did not go through the training. Okay, so you're going to actually nurse. put us through, so help us differentiate between when you find one. If you go through the training of being a nurse, you work by the ethics of the profession. Oh, great. The ethics teaches you how to take care of your patients. You should not, there should be confidentiality, there should be compassion, you have to be patient with whoever you are managing. Childbirth in itself, it's, it's a stressful uh, 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 journey. Uh, yes. Mm. So you don't need to add up to mm. what the woman is going through. Okay. Yes, women have gone through such maltreatments in the past and maybe some are still going through it, mm. but I have not been a witness to it anyway. Okay, so because I, I'm actually surprised that you say that uh, nurses even cry because we always believe that doctors and nurses, they are just, they just come out and tell you the person is dead and that's all. So bear your loss, that's your problem. But it, it's actually good to know that they have emotions and then they always bear their emotions. So now because you talked about um, nurses, there are different kinds of nurses, those that went through the um, professional training, you have the registered nurse, you have the auxiliary nurse and those who are just quacks so when you find one how do you differentiate especially when you go to a hospital and how do you know that no this person is and that's for nurses and i also heard that midwives are even different from all of that because we used to before now we all actually thought that midwives and nurses they are one and the same thing so help mm -hmm. us differentiate between these people okay the registered nurse is the one who has gone through the training uh, usually in this college of nursing you go through a three years training and mm -hmm. uh, you pass the professional exams and you are licensed by the nursing and midwifery council to practice as a nurse okay. and you take an oath to abide by the ethics of that profession whatever you are doing there is a rationale behind what you are doing 
if you are administering this medication, you know the effects of the drug, you know the side effects of the drug, you know the common complications that will arise from you giving that medication, and you know how to tackle those complications. You go through this rigorous training. It's rigorous because you have to learn. And um, it teaches you to be compassionate, emphatic, you know, being a carer, it's, it's different from just waking up and you want to be a nurse mm. over the night. And that's a registered nurse. The registered midwife... But are the registered those, nurse, are they the ones that wear just white dress? Yes, both wear white, the registered nurse and the registered midwife. Okay. The registered nurses can also take care of the pregnant women and conduct delivery. But the midwife is a specialized professional who is mainly taking care of mother and child. Ah, okay. Pregnancy, delivery, and puperium. That okay. is midwifery. Okay. But um, in the past, okay, if you do nothing, you can also do midwifery mm. altogether. There are those who are solely midwives and there are those who are solely nurses. nurses. Okay. But there are those who have the double qualification, like you are a nurse and then you're also a midwife. And then there are those who, after being a nurse, they specialize in other courses like peri-op, uh, anesthesia, okay. um, uh, oncology, nephrology, all those specialties. Mm. But then the midwife is solely taking care of the mother, child, and, the child. and then post delivery okay. as the role of the midwife. Okay. Now, identifying, you cannot identify a nurse by merely looking at Ha. Okay, before it, you go ahead, you've actually not talked about the auxiliary nurse. Okay, that's what I'm saying. The okay. auxiliary nurses are those, they are not nurses, auxiliary workers. I oh, don't know where so they, they are not even nurses. They are not because they are not licensed by the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria. Oh, someone needs to open their ear. If you go one. through the register, hmm. your name has to be found in that register for you to call yourself a nurse. But it's unfortunate in this country that um, anybody who wears white is a nurse. Hmm. I saw a lady working in a pharmacy and they are calling her nurse, nurse. And hmm. she, they learned the job in the hospital. Hmm. Some of them come in as clean. Um, uh, cleaners, mm. health assistants, and then they started. They start learning the job. Not saying it's not a vocation. It's not like um, where you a go to learn skills. mechanic. Yeah. No, mm. this is a profession that takes care of human life. You know the physical. You know the part of physiology. The physiology is not just about giving injection. That injection you are giving. Do you know the site you're supposed to give the injection? What happened if you give the injection at the wrong site? Oh, wow. And what happened if you give the wrong drug? Do you know the antidote of that drug? The auxiliary nurses find themselves in the hospital. Whoever owns the hospital, the doctors or whoever trains them like you train a mechanic. Ah. Apprenticeship. Oh, and wow. You see them doing freedom. Have you ever freedom. seen anybody mm. doing freedom in school of nursing? We do graduation and oath taking. Oh, wow. We don't do freedom. Mm. They do freedom. They carry stethoscope on their necks, carry biro, carry... And they are not qualified. Mm. You, you are at risk if you present yourself to those auxiliaries. They are mostly, sorry to say this, but they are mostly found in private hospitals. Why private hospitals do this is because they, they, they are looking for cheap labor. Ah. You cannot employ a registered nurse and pay her peanuts. But mm. those auxiliaries can collect anything. Anything. Mm. anything. Somebody can just wake up from home and say, I want to learn nursing. Ah. You don't learn nursing that way. They, right now, as I'm talking to you, you have to go through JAM to get admission to read nursing. Oh, wow. That's how far it has gone. So the auxiliaries... Are and they are the ones that are wearing, I think, blue or they green. Wear, and it, they wear what coat? They wear white. You see them, you, don't, you can't identify by looking at them. Hmm. But they are mostly found in private hospitals. And the care they give, yes, some of them can be very good at physically what they are doing. But do hmm. they know the rationale behind what they are doing? They don't know. When you engage them in discussions concerning what they are doing, that's where you'll be able to know, differentiate. This is a nurse. This is not a nurse. Oh, wow. But they are called auxiliaries and not nurses. They just coined that name, nurse, so that they will generalize. So, so, so at this point, thank God we have actually been able to um, differentiate. So anytime you see one, don't call her an auxiliary nurse. We should call her an auxiliary worker. An auxiliary. Great. Auxiliary. All right. So I actually saw, um, let's talk about um, traditional and native midwives because i actually saw um a video um 
uh, where they, they are, they are, I've seen so many videos. There's this recent mm -hmm. one I just saw where the, the birth attendant, unskilled birth attendant, like they call them, was trying to, the, I think the baby was braced. So they were t trying to turn the baby and the process looked very scary. scary. Like I was looking at it and the woman was not complaining. The, the pregnant woman, she, in fact, she even felt like I prefer to go to the native people than go to a hospital because they know how to do it better according to her. The way they were turning like... So now let's talk about those um, um, unregistered um, birth attendant because be, despite uh, the fact that you will say unorthodox, oh, unorthodox. Oh, that's unorthodox. what they're called. Yeah. Okay, so because we, despite whatever you talk about them, people will tell you that they have been there forever. They've yes. given birth to thousands, zillions, and millions of children. So yes. don't you can't take them away from the equation. Yes, the 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 government in in its uh, bid to control or reduce maternal mortality rate. Uh, they were work the midwifery service scheme recognized these traditional birth attendants and trained them. There was a scheme that trained these traditional birth attendants. Okay. We know that in the rural areas they might not have uh, access to uh, health care easily or close by. Mm. So these tra traditional birth attendants have been there taking care of them. When complications arise, they don't know how to manage the complications. And it, they, 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 they don't take decision to refer early enough. So by the time they refer to a bigger hospital, the condition, maybe the complication has become worse. The government now, uh, through the midwifery service scheme, trained them together with the midwives who they were working along with the midwives oh, okay. to reduce maternal mortality, mortality. rate mm. and they gave them some trainings gave them some equipment to work with and working together with them in that if there is a complication they can easily link up with the midwife who is close by and then to to salvage the situation but there are those who have not received any training at all mm. they still go through this scary processes mm. that and sometimes you lose the mother and the, and baby, the baby and sometimes luck they deliver safely ah, but it so is highly luck. risky it's luck mm. it's luck it's highly risky to uh, patronize them because um, it's good to monitor the woman through preg throughout pregnancy if there's possibility of any complication it is diagnosed early mm. and then um, uh, you take action to save the mother and the child. But mm. these traditional birth attendants, some of them have been recognized by the midwifery service scheme. Mm. All right, before we go to other um, topic, let's let's talk to you, um, Obadiah and Bila. Since you already know the name, it looks like you have an experience with them. What do you have to tell us about um, the um, unorthodox uh, birth <laughs> um, attendants? <coughs> well, you know that... Uh there is uh, the, the, the Linda used two words about um, any profession whatsoever. You have to have a calling in that profession, and then of course you have to generate the passion that is required to sustain you in that engagement. Now the unorthodox practitioners, you will discover that. If you talk about calling, it is naturally and traditionally their calling. Either their parents, uh, sorry, their mothers were involved in that practice, mm -hmm. and from infancy they began to develop interest mm -hmm. in what their mother is doing. Eventually, mm -hmm. they become uh, practitioners, mm -hmm. though unorthodox. Mm -hmm. But don't forget that. These days we have clinics, we have uh, health, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary health institutions uh, that we can access. Uh, but that's not also what is available at the rural end, Areas. Mm -hmm. where even the primary health uh, institutions are not functioning. Mm. So you discover that both poverty uh, and then, of course, environment detects the type of um, medical assistance uh, a pregnant woman 
would want to uh, have where there is no primary health institution to take care of her, she would naturally go for the uh, traditional birth attendants. And like it has been acknowledged, some of them are truly called, even though their practice is without knowledge. And mm -hmm. every career, uh, everyone should come to his or her career with first of all learning mm -hmm. and then character. Mm -hmm. That takes me to why is it that those that believe they were called to care, the nurses are called to care. Why is it that you find some of them very hostile mm. to patients? Mm. That points to the fact that, that uh, they may not belong to that calling or they lack the character of that calling maybe some of them just them um, condition made crayfish to bend could so be uh, look for admission to read something else mm -hmm. and eventually it didn't come mm -hmm. and then nothing comes they say, I'm gonna add today nurse, they, they push they you money. into mm -hmm. it and ah. then that's the uh, you word. graduate and, and then they remind you that when you travel abroad nurses are the real deal of course, in, in that context, you will see many people that would want to, uh, uh, you know, read nothing, not because they have passion for the, uh, the job, but mm. because they have been uh, informed that it is a good mind, mm. especially if you can travel uh, abroad. Mm. And we have seen evidence to prove that when you manage to, you know, push yourself abroad, mm. man, you make... Ten times the money mm -hmm. the nurses at uh, the local uh, level make. So, uh, is he saying to you? Yeah, is he talking to you? He pointed at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, we are looking at the pregnant woman, those that cares for mm -hmm. her, and so on and so forth. You discover that even in other professions, there are people that are occupying there, not because they have a calling or passion for it, but mm. because uh, if you know, see what you go do, you do what you mm. see. You know? mm. uh, at a time in this Abuja, you would go to uh, places where you get laborers and you are looking for a medicine. And you saw one, uh, sorry, you are looking for an electrician and you saw a man coming with a trowel indicating that he's a, a medicine, he's a builder. Mm. And he said, no, I'm looking for an electrician. He threw away his, uh, uh, this thing and I look for a uh, uh, plier, uh, uh, screwdriver. I said, let's go. <laughs> you know? <I> know. <laughs> so that is how it goes. Mm. You know? And that is why we have quacks. And mm. that is why we have people who do not uh, adhere to the ethics of their calling. Mm. And that and is why that is we have uh, nurses. Uh, who can afford to scream Snap. and beat a, a, a woman in pain, you know. Mm. You know. It's, it's, it's quite so unfortunate. Sad. All right, so now let's go straight to our that, um, topic of discussion, and uh, which is with regards to the myth surrounding um, how a baby's placenta should be disposed or should be handled either by the nurse or the father of um, the baby, or that's the husband of the pregnant woman and then i've read so many stories way too many the last one i just read about was um we, one I, someone sent uh, via uh, social media says um that this one happened in ondo state where some persons were arrested in a hospital i'm not going to mention the name the person put there it says um, after a 23 year old uh, father of a newborn baby a certain um Ijanusi made a complaint that his 20 year old wife gave birth to a baby on june 15th at the health center and when the father of the baby asked the ba for the baby's placenta the nurse and the assistant could not produce it and according to the father of the baby that was their tradition that he was supposed to receive his baby's placenta now wait for the uh, interesting part of it now according to him he said the hosp hospital officials they told him that a dog entered into the facility of the hospital and uh, probably threw away the placenta which led to the uproar as the father of the baby said that they would not accept the story the hospital was given the hospital decided that okay they, they okay they pleaded with him and then told him offered to um that he should not pay a dime for the delivery oh my god wow. let's start with you linda dung <sighs> that's uh, it's not a palatable story anyway 
But um, every uh, health institution have their own policies as mm. to um, disposal of placenta. And th now there are different ways people can dispose the placenta. One, it depends on the hospital policy. If the hospital policy says you must carry your placenta, they give it. Oh, there so the hospital policy has to tell me how I would no. deal with my baby's placenta? No, there are hospital policies that if you decide to leave the placenta, they dispose it together with other hospital waste. Because there are different types of waste disposal in the hospital, okay. depending on where the waste has been generated. Oh, Tissue okay. waste is disposed different, separately from... Um, uh, lab chemical waste and others oh, okay. so if you decide if the hospital policy states that you must carry your placenta you must carry it but there are hospitals that give you option but i don't know whether there are hospitals that insist that you must leave the placenta mm. but you have option of either taking it or leaving it for the hospital to dispose now most hospitals here in this country people carry their placenta they okay. give you your placenta, you go and dispose it by yourself. But there are some that will say they can't, they don't have anywhere to dispose it. They leave it together with the hospital waste. They, they dispose it together with the hospital waste. And um, I read, I also read that uh, another method of disposal is to eat the placenta. Ah. There are people who mm. decide to eat the placenta. Mm. So that's another method of uh, disposal of the placenta. You collect the placenta after delivery. You go home, however you cook it, either raw or cooked, it's your property. Okay, so <laughs> I, I saw that, that part also where they, where they <laughs> talked about um, different ways that you can actually um, dispose. They talked about um, eating it, they talked about turning it to pills, pills um, and they talked about making it as cream. Would we'll, we'll come back to that. But now let's, um, let's come to you, let's talk to you, Obadiah Bila. Let's talk about the traditional. And the religious, she has told us the medical aspect of it, of disposing baby's placenta, the traditional and religious part of it, especially in um, Igbo land. When you go to some parts in Anambra, in Ungwa, they tell you that um, the first um, born, the first boy, his placenta must be buried under Ukone, that's the um, plantain tree, or oh, wow. the under the Oha tree, because these trees are trees that they don't ever die. They always grow so they're always very careful of where they bury it so that some animals carnivorous animals don't come up and dig it again so just help us demystify that myth around um baby's placenta and then disposing of the placenta why they have to give it to the father of that baby uh, you know before the modernization of uh, uh, our country we as a people came from different traditional backgrounds mm. and there are beliefs that prevails in every part of this country uh, which differs from what is obtainable from other parts the of West. the country. Mm. I, I just want to uh, deviate a little to tell you what I witnessed some time ago uh, between an experience I had in Owere, Federal Medical Center Owere, where we had gone to uh, collect the body of a friend for burial. And I noticed that the, uh, the morgue attendants do not enter into the morgue without some drama, drama that follows it. They will knock mm. and then uh, Go be, probably goes as behind. if there is a force that is uh, preventing oh, them from entering the mug. Oh, wow. And so after that uh, drama, they eventually would want to appease the spirit of those that are in the mug so that they can assess wow. the mug. That's now, the mug, not yes, the shrine. No, no. So after I, 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 I'm such a doubter of that type of uh, scenario, so we took the body home and buried. Then again, I had a s experience here in uh, Gariki General Hospital where we went to take a body of a uh, uh, lady that we were to convert down to the east for burial. And the uh, mug attendants were just doing their business, going inside the mug, coming out without all those 
things that they were doing in the east That's you cool. know so different strokes for different folks <laughs> exactly mm. so the guy would just walk into the mall come out no nothing no uh, no uh, ritual Dancing. nothing mm. now i decided to compare my experience in abuja and that of Owere. Mm. i was able to say look uh, dead bodies are dead bodies <sighs> No matter where they die and where the body is laid. Mm. So they don't do something different in the East mm. and do something different in the North. Mm. There is this tradition that has prevailed in the East that Ufe, as they call it, should be buried in under um, uh, 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 Oga tree mm. uh, so that mm. the, the, the boy will grow up to be a son of the soil. Mm. All right, and that it was being done uh, until when uh, traditional way of uh, uh, birth, birth changed to become uh, to be modernized the way it is now. Mm. Now, what that means is that if you are from the east and your father is living in uh, America, for instance, and give birth to you. You certainly know that he will not fly in from I wanted to ask United that. States of the placenta America <laughs> to bury your affair and then go back. <laughs> so this has uh, for some okay, so time. For, sorry, for our, for our viewers who don't know, Ufe means and placenta. placenta. Yeah, placenta, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> go ahead. So, so they do it that same way in Anambra, in uh, Ngwalan, for instance, uh, uh, mm -hmm. some of these places is either under uh, Ogrishi tree or under a red tree or under a, a, banana, a, banana. a banana tree mm. depending on where you are uh, from mm. but all these things if we would appreciate them and appropriate them where they belongs to all that is required i think is to dispose of this because it itself does not look comely doesn't look inviting ah. so it should be mm -mm. disposed properly mm. now every other belief that is attached to it is just a belief that people in certain area bought mm -hmm. into and mm -hmm. allow so that bad. belief to impact their practice so it is just a myth it's not like it's true that whatever happens to it's, that it's, um, placenta would affect that child not really it, you know the, there is something about belief. Belief gets into what we call stronghold. Mm. So that in that community, in that society, people have grown over centuries to believe that this is the way it must be done. Ah. Now, when it is not done in that way, something like consequences mm. comes. And you, don't and, you that think, that and you think it's not real. It's real. Because that is the force that prevails in that area. Mm. That is what they have designed for and against themselves. Mm. Now, to extricate yourself from that belief is very difficult. You must grow up to, uh, to discover that God created us as individuals. And he created us as independent individuals. To live in a community is to share common belief. Mm. But if that common belief is harmful is retrogressive it's uh, negative it is up to you to drop it and move on with your life all right oh, Bila, because you said if that belief is harmful retrogressive you should move on my next question would be is this this belief is it harmful but before you take that let's go on a quick break we will return we'll continue this conversation with my guest Obade Ambila and linda dung see you later There is this tradition that has prevailed in the East that Ufe, as they call it, should be buried in under um, uh, uh, Oga tree mm. uh, so that the, the, the boy will grow up to be a son of the soil. Mm. All right. And that it was being done uh, until when uh, traditional way of... Uh, uh, birth, birth, change to become uh, to be modernized the way it is now. Mm. 
If you just joined us, this is D Conversation. We are reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed the whole lot on the most interesting part of the of show. But then you can still join the show as my guest on the show today is Linda Dong, who is a nurse. And we also have Obadaya Mbela, who is um, the convener of Igbo Neighborhood um, Outreach. It's, uh, we've actually discussed quite a number of things. And then... We stopped that where you talked about um, if this belief is retrogressive, if it is bad, if it's worse, throw it away and move on. But there you still have some people who, most people in some tribe who have decided to hold on to that culture, that ritual, that tradition that they grew up with. Some people will tell you that um, uh, when we talked about, we actually recently did a conversation where we talked about the Igbo people, where we talked to... Um, uh, Okwadike, that's um, uh, the former uh, governor, governor of Anambra, Anambra State. State. And then he made us to understand that in most um, parts, yes. most people still hold these traditions to, uh, they still hold them very like, religiously. Like for the young boys, before they have, before they are uh, grown, they, they have, they, there's a particular ritual they call Ibamo, where you have to go through the masquerades and all. So no matter whatever you say to those people, they will not leave that tradition. So now if you say that this tradition, if it is retrogressive, if it is bad, then leave it and walk away. Two questions and I'd like you to unbond them in one breath. Is this tradition about placenta disposal? How you must be careful about it? Is it bad? Is it retrogressive? And if you say yes, it is, then to that person who is watching us from that, from wherever they are, either from that their culture where they don't take they they take these things seriously, how would you talk to such people? Well, like they say, uh, the Ibu man will say, "Nkodinambanehere Henry." the firewood in any community cooks for them mm. and um, <clears throat> to that extent if the people still hold on to that practice well uh, I, I wouldn't say it's negative uh, wouldn't say it's positive but if it works for them you leave it at that but certainly i do know that if someone is from Imo State, for instance, and is living somewhere in Canada or UK or any overseas country, and then is making baby <coughs> there, he will not be required to pass through these processes. Uh, mm. In the past, there was this practice uh, in the area where I came from. Even when you come back, from wherever you are, either in diaspora or any other place within the country. You bring back your children <coughs> for the traditional ezerale, meaning the, the prime minister will now take them to a certain stone mm. and then uh, make incantation, reminds them that this is your root. Mm. And that is the I know of another one is also in that same Imo state where they call Ikwezi, that's for the girls okay. before they attend puberty stage. Okay. You must go through that. Okay. So... Uh, according to that belief, wherever you go, uh, you come back because they, you, they, they have done the Ezerali thing. So it brings you back mm. uh, to your root. roots. That is their belief. And you know, the Bible made a very strong statement when it said, as a man thinketh, so he is. Mm. So this thing is neither here nor there, but what works for people? And you allow it there. That is why the, when the Catholic Church came with their mission, they didn't so much like the evangelical attack the available traditions they met there. They did what they call enculturation, you know, bringing your culture uh, to have uh, a common ground with uh, the culture of the church. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, enculturation was a system to retain the people's culture and um, for me uh, whatever works for you whatever works for a community should be uh, retained the church also uh, I don't know what happens to uh, the Islamic uh, uh, area but in Christianity you see some people have even carried the Jewish tradition of, uh, uh, you know, uh, handling this placenta in a sacred way, you mm. know, uh, 
and then of course giving name uh, after a certain uh, day uh, after the, uh, the the baby is born mm. and then they say it's after four days or after mm. eight days Ida, you, uh, mbafo, or right. <laughs> you know you give name so mm. <laughs> all yeah. these things I, I, we actually talked about all of that if it is a lady yeah. if it's a woman mm. but if it is uh, a male it is a, 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 a um, and Okonkwo. Okonkwo. Uh, Okafo. Okafo mm. and uh, Okereke, mm. you know, uh, all that. To make sure that the four days mm. of the Igbo week mm. is yes. adequately mm. covered. Mm. You are a woman and they're born you in Kwo. Immediately your name is Mbokwo. Mm. Uh, <laughs> if you are a woman, they're born you in Eke, you are Mbeke. And they don't even know whether the children later, because these uh, 21st century children, the alphas, the AIs, the Gen Zs, they don't want to hear Mbeke. They don't want to hear Mbafo. Mm. Didn't Linda tell you her name is Linda? <laughs> Does she not have the other name? I do. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Here we are with you. Uh, Annabelle. 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 <laughs> is there no other name behind Annabelle? <laughs> yes, no I'm Carlo, you know, but... Uh, Christianity mm. has influenced the Igbo man's uh, way of life mm. very, very much. It has eaten deep into uh, the culture of the people, so much so that our traditional name are uh, even considered as evil in some places. Mm. People will tell you, ah, you are still answering a name of a shrine. Mm. Yeah, don't you know that Kalu is the name of a shrine? Mm. My, pap my father didn't name me Kalu because it, it's a name of a shrine. He named me Kalu because the meaning of Kalu is acceptable mm. to me. Mm. And then, of course, the church said, no, you must become Obedaya. So, <laughs> you know, I can move up. Well, I've come to realize that it was not good that we allow the church tradition to uh, erode into our own tradition but modifying our tradition and carrying on the way we were before they met us was better even in the scripture it is said somewhere that uh, the, uh, the, uh, way, the way you are to meet christ continue in that way mm. so uh, they should have allowed our own brand of Christian religion to be indigenous as much as possible. Mm, uh, right. here, here we have um, mixed up so much that we are not strong in our indigenous thing and we are not strong mm, in, our, Even in, in our religion. religion. So we are like the, uh, the, is it the, the church in the Sadis that is neither cold nor hot, nor hot that has to be spewed out. out. You know, unfortunately, oh. many people have not come to that consciousness that we need to readdress this thing. Even mm. as a Christian uh, religion, we need to address all these things so that we have a definite oh, way nice. you say that you are working. Mm. And then uh, the people will be illuminated. There will be clarity in what they are doing. There will not be a struggle between yeah. tradition mm. and religion. Mm. Mm. Very well said. Now let's come back to you, uh, Linda Dung. Let's still talk about the medical part of disposing the placenta, like we said earlier. And some people would say it's better to eat it. Some people would say they should turn it to peel. That's the uh, placenta encapsulation. Mm. Some people would say they turn it to their body creams mm. and then oh, wow. uh, lots of things that they do do about. It. So how how best, as a nurse, medically, would you advise? any parent either a new parent or an experienced one to dispose that placenta okay the placenta itself is a, a body tissue and um, after serving its function of uh, nurturing the baby because it's from the placenta that the baby gets nutrition gets oxygen waste are removed from the pla uh, baby's body through the placenta into the mother's body and it also serves the purpose of maintaining the pregnancy itself by producing uh, hormones like uh, estrogen and progesterone. Sorry, so, before you go ahead, sorry I have to board in those. So does it actually mean that there might be waste in yes. the placenta? Yes, the placenta oh, wow. now, after, uh, since it has, been, it has served the purpose of uh, excreting waste from the baby to the mother, mm. it definitely stores some uh, waste. Mm. So 
consuming the placenta can uh, come with some complications because whatever you are consume, consuming after delivery you might not get to immediately refrigerate the placenta and it takes time for you to collect the placenta in between that time uh, there could be growth of microorganisms and mm. you cook the placenta and you eat and then there's accumulation of waste in the placenta there are problems with eating consuming the placenta even though some people do consume the placenta mm. but it comes with its own uh, disadvantages so uh, it, it, it can uh, it has been discovered that um, even the people who take the encapsulated uh, placenta um, it was discovered that the baby now developed a strep infection and they traced it to the capsules of the placenta mm. the mother was swallowing because, mm. and it was passed through the breast milk to mm. the baby because that placenta stored that strep uh, infection. So the best way to dispose of the placenta, one, is um, either to donate it to tissue labs. Oh, they use it for There are legitimate tissue labs. They can use it for um, uh, in the anatomy uh, uh, to... Um, lectures okay. for okay. upcoming mm. uh, doctors and mm. nurses. Okay. They use it uh, to study, mm. and then after studying the the, the 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 you need to see the physical so they can donate the placenta to legitimate tissue labs, mm. and that is done prior to delivery. There are paperwork you sign, you document, indicate interest that you want to donate the placenta. That's another way of disposing. Another way is to dispose it together with the hospital waste, like I said. That one is uh, more hygienic. But people who prefer to carry their placenta, they go and bury it. They mm. dig very deep holes mm. and then bury the placenta. I think they can even burn it too. Uh, yes, you can burn it too. If you burn it very well to dry, not to leave residual uh, flesh or mm. wet uh, tissues after the burning. You burn it very well and dispose of the ash. That's another safe way of disposing the placenta. Uh, another way of disposing, like I said, uh, some people cure it to make uh, pendants, use the ash to make pendants or uh, frames make frames mm. and then keep oh, it wow. in the home it gives them uh, there is you know pregnancy comes with it's an a exciting experience mm, like so as the mm. baby grows you view every day as the baby grows you relate the experience of that pregnancy with that placenta on your wall oh, wow. and there are people that also plant trees together with the placenta mm. as the tree is growing they mm. watch the baby grow together wow. with the tree mm. wow and uh, i think that is safe mm. I, too. Mm. I, I love that i know of this the i think that prevails uh in a quiet boom area okay. and the cross river area where they have to plant uh, uh, a coconut okay they'll plant a coconut or uh cola nut mm. you know so uh, you, they will always and remind this tree, tree never dies yeah they, they will always remind you that's mm. your coconut that's okay wow. because you grew up together <laughs> you came together yeah. with the coconut tree and um in my place i think the best way they do is bearing i've bearing. not seen them do any there's no tradition no behind ritual. it another reason why it is the men that bury the placenta is because the mother who j just gave birth mm. is not able to come out and do that mm. that is why the placenta is given to the, father to the father to go and bury there's no ritual there's no laid down rule as in the father must be the one okay. to collect the placenta to go and bury okay so but in some tradition yes. in some tradition yes it is believed that the the father must be the one to bury it not because the the, the woman is not strong enough oh. to handle it but mm. because it is the right person, right person. to do it well, okay. her friend mm. just told me a story of how her husband collected the placenta of their first baby left it in the boot and was <laughs> going about his normal three days <laughs> she asked him have you buried the placenta he said ah, he has not uh, buried he forgot she said she got up cs she had cs she had to carry the placenta herself, dig a place and bury the placenta. I, I guess like you said earlier, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, okay. The sacredness that is attached to, to placenta is really bringing the conversation mm. to this. Mm. Uh, All right. So some people, I, I saw one actually sent on social media saying that um, uh, they have to be very careful um, 
I'm trying to put the words together, says um, um, the the placenta is the child's glory. Hence, yes. danger it could be dangerous in the wrong hands. Some people say, some people even sell it to ritualists, which are used for ritual purposes. And also, you need to be careful of the first water used to beat the baby because they also use it, sell it for ritual purposes. Is this myth or okay. true? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Uh, there is uh, the story making the rounds in Abuja, uh, uh, men losing their manhood ah, to... These days. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So when I was alerted about the one they said that happened somewhere in Wuse area of Abuja, I quickly remembered a similar story that occurred sometime maybe when I was 16 or 17 years, you know, way back in Aba. Uh, we just had commotion everywhere. What happening? And look at, lo and behold, a man claimed that uh, he lost his manhood after shaking a certain man. Now, I have never had evidence to establish that this thing is true or not. The type of evidence that they parade, for me, does not uh, match the intensity that is attached to that news of uh, one losing his uh, his manhood. When I also ask, does women also lose their womanhood in this type of handshake? I, I thing? had I had this. It's, it's oh, me there also. Is the women. women fa uh, yes. Version fa of it. Yes. Wow. yes. <laughs> anyway, see the where the sacredness that is attached to a placenta can lead to development of many theories and some of these theories may not be founded but there is no way you can now trace to pin down the validity of the theory or otherwise for instance i can't find a ritualist to ask him how the how what effective mm. is the use of placenta in making money mm. i can't find one so I would not dig into that conversation. I cannot also find out from anyone who have used uh, someone's plancita or the first water or whatever to, uh, to, to guide the future of the, 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 the boy or the girl that owns the plancita. And which uh, sometimes you don't even know the person. You would not know the person. The point I'm trying to bring out here, that the story behind this uh, placenta thing starts from the fact that we handle it sacredly. Mm. And anything that human beings handle with sacredness, there would always be a progressive theory, stories mm. Mm. that accompanies that. Mm. Because humans are always interested in giving name to whatever thing they do not understand, understand. whatever mm. thing they mm. are ignorant about, mm. they will it's now me. give a name to it. And once that name clicks, it begins to it spread. It becomes the culture. It becomes the culture of the people. All right. So now our time is fast spent. But before we finally let you go, let's um, get your last words with regards to spousal um, support. What is the importance of your husband? or the wife or being there uh, or especially for the husband when the woman is trying to put to bed because in all of this you just the woman needs support she needs her husband beside her or if, even though we, we talk to the nurse also because i heard most times you don't allow them in but sometimes the woman might decide okay sh i want my husband in so just in few minutes just tell us um, the importance of spousal support especially in child delivery well i i think first of all before we begin to talk of the husband's support at the time of labor, we must also trace that support, that romance, that togetherness mm. have existed before the pregnancy, before pregnancy. during pregnancy, mm. and now to labor. Mm. And then I, afterwards. I, yes, I can't imagine a husband that has not always been there for he knows when it was time to get the wife pregnant. And then after that, he continues flying in, flying out, not so, not caring about the woman. And then suddenly, because he, he, she is in the maternity, uh, in the labor room, <clears throat> then the husband will change and become loving. If a husband does that, and for the purpose of supporting the woman to give birth 
that's uh, uh, commendable. But I would like a support that didn't just happen at the labor room, but has uh, been there from uh, before the pregnancy, during the pregnancy, and, and so on. I, I remember my own first experience. I didn't know what I was doing was a rare thing until uh, mm. uh, the, the, I saw the nurses commending me, uh, this is rare. What I didn't want to do for my wife at that first uh, this thing was to go Have into, the, into the labor room. <laughs> Don't take me there. I repeatedly <laughs> want the bed. For every support, I think I was there. And uh, All right. uh, that's how it should be. Mm, that's definitely. All right, let's get your last word, um, Linda Dog, with regards to spousal support or participation. Because I've heard some men would tell you that we are in this together. We are carrying our baby. It's our pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But then some other persons will come out and tell you that I've done the job of making you pregnant. So go push it out yourself. And then <laughs> when uh, some will tell you that I want to go into the to the labor room with my wife, but then even though the hospital will tell them they are not allowed in. So what are the importance of this? Childbirth is, uh, yeah. the woman goes through yeah. excruciating pain. And uh, in this part of the world, until maybe recently, uh, we are not used to giving analgesia uh, during delivery like uh, the uh, civil, uh, developed wars do, they give uh, uh, a pudenda block and the woman doesn't go through the pain of childbirth. Mm, but but why is that? Why, why don't we give it here? Um, we are getting there. We are getting there gradually. They didn't start uh, giving initially, but they are doing it and it's very important mm. because the pain the woman goes through is only a woman who has gone through childbirth that will tell you the pain is it's, mm. it's only you who have been there that will be able to say, the woman needs all the support she can. She is, the hormones are rocking her up and down. Mm. The baby is, it's, it's rocking. The woman goes through a lot. So during childbirth, the husband needs to be there, give emotional support, give, uh, you know, you know, support her, encourage her. Even though our labor words are not uh, fashioned in such a way that, uh, Husbands can easily go in because you have like three beds with that are separated by curtains and you won't feel nice going in there when another mm, person's yes. wife is mm, there. So in hospitals where you have one person per room, the husbands are allowed to go in. But how many of them want to go mm. in? Because some so of them will like, tell you, I don't want to see. Like some you call them in the faint when the woman is mm. putting uh, delivering. So it is very important. The woman needs all that support during childbirth because she goes through a lot to bring that child mm. and that oh. child belongs to both the woman and the husband mm. so she needs that support the husband should be there it's not like you'll be in the office and be calling your boys uh, she's in labor <laughs> and you're waiting in the office when she delivers you start popping mm. champagne you and need to man. be there mm. to be there she sees you she gets encouraged mm. all right the Aosa man says um childbirth is like a gap between the, the death and the living is either she survives or she dies and so many have died during mm. childbirth so she needs spousal support it's very very essential oh wow what a fine place to anchor this conversation thank you so much linda dung um nurse it's been a wonderful time having this discussion with you thank you i'm glad i came <laughs> was definitely glad to have you and thank you so much um obadiah mbila uh, convener Ibo neighborhood um thanksgiving group it has been a wonderful time having this conversation with you thank you for always having me and thank you for cracking us up <laughs> <laughs> All right, viewers, that's where we end this conversation for today. I am sure that you have been rightly entertained, informed, and educated. That's, that's exactly what we're trying to bring out from this conversation. Not only entertainment, but also to educate and enlighten our viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in. And from all of us, from my director looking at me right now and my editor, we say, God bless you. Have a very wonderful Saturday morning, weekend rather. Saturday morning or Sunday morning. I will see you next time. My name is Annabelle Oji. God bless you and yours and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>